Good morning. Today I'm going to show our CSV mapping feature from not only the GUI but also from the command line. And to do that, we're going to start with a complete blank slate. So I'm going to set the Vectorcast working directory to a blank a directory, to an empty directory. So let's go to my computer. We're going to go to the D drive. We're going to create a project and we're going to create a new directory, CSV. To there and I'm going to create a new unit test environment. We're just going to use the Vectorcast MinGWC. Uh, we're going to name the environment and we're going to do CSV example. Um, I am going to do a statement and branch coverage and then we're going to go find our source code and for this demo we're just going to use our tutorial code manager.c and manager.c and then we're going to build this environment. So we're we'll going to wait just a second for this environment to build. Shouldn't take that long here. All right, so now we have environment built. So we're going to use place order to do our CSV mapping. So when I right click, I can select generate CSV map. We're going to select this and it gives us this little CSV mapping utility. But first of all, before we start going into this, I kind of want to show you what place order does so you can understand how we're going to map it. So we're going to open the source here. It opens up in this little um, VI window that I like to use. And so place order is a function we're going to use, okay? So place order takes in a table number, a seat number, and an order structure. And then it's got a couple of stubs. In a vector cast, the stubbing is automatic. So um, if you don't provide source code for get table record, and update table record right here, VectorCast will automatically stub those. And the nice thing about the CSV mapping is you can uh, use the CSV mapping to do inputs or expected values for stubs as well as the unit under test or the function under test. So we're going to show how to do the get, use get table record and update table record in our CSV mapping. Okay, so go back to VectorCast and we're gonna open up our little uh, mapping here. First of all, we're going to rename this to something more unique or something a better name than that. We're going to call it place order CSV mapping. OK, and then we're going to create the template. So we're going to create a CSV file with the exact template that we want to use. So first of all, let's choose and choose a name of our CSV file and we're just going to call it place order. OK, so we're going to hit save. Now we need to do our template. OK, so we're going to choose down here in the bottom the uh, parameters in our parameter tree that we want to have in our CSV file. OK, so for the place order, we want the table number, we want the seat number, and then for the order, we want the entree. We're just going to do the just to make it simple. We're just going to do the entree. And now down here is our su stubbed subprograms. OK. So we're going to use get table record. This is going to be a return into our function under test. So we want to return the check total as an input to the function under test. This is our input values here. This is our expected values over here. So we've set up all of our inputs to the function under test place order. Next thing we want to do is we want to check all the expected values at the end. So we want to set those up in our CSV file as well. So we're going to go to data and we're going to go to this um, to our database here and order zero, and we're going to want to see the expected values on our entree. And then we're also gonna to wanna to do expected values on our check total. Now there's a lot more we could do with this. There's a lot of different things that we could pass in and check expected values on, but we're gonna to try to keep it fairly simple for this example here. Okay, so now once we have all of our mapping set up, and you can see here that it tells you which parameter we have here. So this is two, this is three, actually this is not parameter, this is the actual, um, columns in the CSV table. So this is column two, this is column three, this is column four. Down here is column five. Over here is column six, column seven, okay? So now we just save this, okay? And when we click save, what's going to happen if we go back to our Explorer window here, you see that we've now created the CSV mapping file, okay? So let's double click on it and open it up. That's how I have CSV map to open up in Excel. So now I'm going to expand these out so you can see this a little better. All right. So this first column, column A, is just our test name. Now column B um, kind of tells you exactly what it's going to be. One, it's going to be an input. It's going to be an input, and the unit under test is manager. 
the function is place order. It's an it's unsigned short, and the name of it is table. Okay. Here's another input into, into place order. It's unsigned short. It's the seat number. Another input into manager is the order entree. Now, this is where we get into the stubs. So we're going to have a stub input, and you can tell that it's UT prototype stubs, which shows it's a stub. And it's a stub for get table record. It's a float, and it's the check total, okay? And then expected column over here, the next one is now we're getting to our expected data, okay? These are also stubs. of data table record is a stub, and it is our entree. And then we have another expected value for our check total, okay? So we could go in and fill, write in a test name and all this sort of thing, fill in each of these by hand. But I've got an example over here that I've already done, and I'm going to just copy and paste to save time. So over here... So we're going to paste this in, and you see that the name of our first test case is place the order steak. is table number zero, seat number zero. We're going to pass in steak as the entree. We're going to return a check total, a default check total of 10. When we update our table record, we expect it to be steak as our entree, and we expect the check total to be 24. Now, how we got to that 24 was we take the check total from our input, which was 10, and we add it to the price of steak, which is 14. 10 plus 14 equals 24. Same for all of these, right? Cost of chicken is $10. You add it to the 10 that's the default uh, check total, and you get 20, so forth and so on for lobster and pasta. So now we have four test cases defined in our CSV mapping. So let's hit save here. So now we can go to VectorCast and we can right click and say create tests. But first of all, let's go here to use existing data file and you can see that it picks up all these tests here. So if we expand this out, you can see it picks up the place order steak, place order chicken, place order lobster, so forth and so on. So now we come here, right click and we say create tests. And it's gonna generate those four test cases that we just had in our CSV file. So now we can right click and we can execute and run those and you can see they all ran successfully, right? Based on the data we saw. So if we go to the execution report, you can see that we expected lobster, we expected touch hold 28, all green, all good. All right, so that shows us how we do it from VectorCast from the GUI. But now we want to do it from the command line. So first of all, let's get rid of these four tests that we created. So all we're left with is this CSV mapping. That is the single test case that you want to keep inside of your unit test environment for the to do it from the command line. All right, so we can get rid of all these. So the next thing we want to do is we want to create regression scripts for this, right? So we go to create regression scripts here, and we're gonna go here, and we're gonna create the regression scripts just in the same directory, okay? So we're gonna choose this directory, and we're gonna create click create and we're going to click done okay at this point we are now done with vectorcast the gui here so now we have our bat file our env file and our test file which are part of our regression script and we have our csv file which we created from vectorcast so now we can remove all the other stuff because vectorcast is going to recreate it so we get oops we get rid of this this and this delete those and now we're left with four files these three are the regression scripts, and this one is that CSV mapping that we created, which is this one right here, is one that we're using for, um, for this uh, particular CSV mapping here, okay? So now what we need to do is let's take a look at the bat file because we're going to want to run this regression script to recreate all this from the command line, okay? So this regression script sets up everything in here. It sets up the compiler options, which is just the MinGW. It um, creates the environment. It runs the, imports the TST, and then does a batch execute of all the tests, and then generates the reports, okay? Well, we want to add a little something in here right before the batch execute of all the tests. We want to take that CSV mapping, and we want to import all the tests from CSV and then run all the tests. So we're going to add a couple of things right below this. And I've got them over here preloaded so that we don't have to waste time typing them out. So I'm going to paste them in here. And you see here that we're going to do two things, right? Here's the new lines we added, which is right here, okay? So this is going to take that CSV example environment 
and dash u is unit under test, which is manager. Dash s is the function under test, which is place order. And then the dash t is that mapping test that we have in there, right? And then this is the command to tell Vectorcast right here to take that CSV file and create a .tst file, which contains all the tests for each row inside of that um, CSV file that we have, okay? So this is going to take that CSV file and it's going to create tests for all those rows in there. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to import that .tst file that we created right on line 30 here and we need to import it or run it on line 31 to, to bring those tests into the tool. And then when we do the execute batch, it'll run those tests, okay? So we've added those tests. Now, one thing I will say is that this is creating a commands.temp file, which allows you to run a bunch of commands from a file. You could also enter all these, all these um, commands individually if you wanted to, but this is a nice way to do it from a regression standpoint. So let's save this. And then let's go to back to Vectorcast. So now we can get rid of this bat file here. And we can get rid of these two temp files that are created by VI. And we're still left with our four files, okay? So now we're going to want to run that bat file. So let's run that bat file here. Example.bat. And it's going to recreate that entire environment from the command line. Okay, so it generated this HTML file here. So let's open that guy up. And you can see that we have our four test cases, which are the four that we added in this mapping here, place order steak, chicken, lobster, pasta, and we have two expected values per test. So that's where we get the four tests and then the eight expected values, right? And here's our four tests, place order steak, place order chicken, place order lobster, place order pasta. All right. So you can see that once you create um, this CSV file and you create your regression scripts, at that point, you can easily just um, keep adding tests to the CSV and then rerunning the regression scripts and it'll, it'll add those to all those tests and rerun them. So let's do that one more time. Let's remove all of those things. This, this, and this, we don't need anymore. Let's delete these. We're back to our four, our regression scripts and our CSV file. And then let's go add another row to our CSV file. And you can see how easy it is to create new tests here. So we're gonna paste this in. This is actually a test that allows, we're gonna, we're gonna call uh, place order twice, once with pasta and once with no entree, and we're going to expect two expected values, a 22 and a 10 here. Okay, so let's save this. Now, when we run our bat script again, we are going to see that we're going to go through that whole process of creating um, those tests. We're going to create the report, and you can see now when I open it up now, we've got five test cases. We've got 12 expected values because that last the last test had four expected values by itself. And you notice here that here's our all our tests, right? Place order steak, chicken, lobster, pasta, pasta no entree, which had four expected values over here. So this kind of shows you that you can do CSV mapping from the GUI, but you can also do it fully from the command line and just keep adding more tests to your Excel spreadsheet or your CSV spreadsheet and just keep you know, changing that, rerunning regression scripts, and then um, fully have Vectorcast run in an automated fashion from the command line. Thank you. 